Hello, Jason Mene from Motion Caddy here. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a simple infographic where you can use sliders to control the size of each section, essentially building an easy to update infographic. We have here a controls layer and each one controls a section. So I do have these keyframes, but if we just alter these, say I wanted this first section to be 10, that would then change to 10. And let's change third to 30 and this one to 25. And they all update automatically, so let's just make that 100. And they all update, and these can be keyframes as you saw in the intro, and it's very easy to update if any info gets changed in the future, or if you want to create a template where you can simply roll out lots of infographics one after the other. So it's very useful. This will be a two-part tutorial. In this first tutorial, we will be looking at creating the pie chart itself. And then in part two, we will be creating these numbers to go with it. So let's just jump in and get started. So I'm going to start by adding a new composition. I'm going to leave that all as it is, but I'm just going to call it pie chart. And then I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to hold shift so that it stays in proportion. And then let go and up in a line. I'm just going to make sure it's aligned to our composition. This just makes things easier in the future because the radial wipe we will be adding also works from the center. It's just a lot easier to make sure everything's centered. You can always take this composition, put it into a new comp and adjust its position and scale. It's just simpler for this composition if we have everything centered. So that's nice and centered. I'm just going to name this layer one which is quite important as our expressions will be looking at these names. So make sure you name this one. Then layer, new adjustment layer. And this is where our controls are gonna be. So I'm going to call this controls. And then in our effects, I'm just going to search for a slider and drag that onto our controls. And I'll name that one. And that is just to correspond with our first circle, number one. I'm then going to duplicate this slider five times because that's how many sections I want. If you need 10, duplicate it 10 times. If you need three, three, and so on. Just make sure you have as many sliders as you want sections. I only need five, so I'm going to leave it at five. And then let's go back down to our circle one and add our radial wipe. So I search for that and drag this on. And with this transition completion, you will see that this is basically how we're going to be creating our sections. Although I do want mine to go counterclockwise, so I'm just going to select counterclockwise, just so it's going from left to right, rather than the other way around. I just prefer it that way. It's completely up to you, but our expressions will be working with it being counterclockwise. So if you are gonna follow this down to a T, make sure you have counterclockwise selected. So back down in our layers, we're going to find our radial wipe in effects. And with transition completion, we're going to open up the expression box by holding Alt on a Mac or Option on a PC and clicking the stopwatch. Now bring up our expression box. And what we need to do is pick whip our slide at number one. So I'm just going to move this up and on our controls, I'm just going to find that slider one. And it's here. So I'm going to go back to our expression and delete that. And with this pick whip here, I'm just going to click and hold and select our slider one. I'm just going to click off, back to our controls, and see if our slider one affects that section. Yes, it does. But what it does do is it's working backwards. So when this is on 100, you will see it's actually on zero here. There's no section. And if I bring this back down to zero, rather than going down, it's actually going up. So this is backwards. So what we're going to do is back in our expression. At the start, we're going to add S equals, and then our pick whipped expression afterwards. And at the end, just the semicolon. Then a new line. And all we need to do, and all we need to do is go 100 minus S or whatever we've called our, our slider expression. And all this does 
And all this does is make sure that it's working the correct way. So now our slider one is on zero and we can't see anything. So let's just see if by increasing this number, we increase the size of the section. And it does, that's working perfectly. So if that's on 100, that should be 100 there. There we go. We also want where it has effect one here, where it's looking at the layout named one, or the effect named one, sorry, we want to change this to name. And that is so when we duplicate this layer, it doesn't then look at the control slider one. We want it to look at the same name as our layer. So currently we're on layer one, and we want it to look at slider one. When we duplicate this, and it creates a layer called two, we want it to look at slider number two. So just by adding this here, instead of the name of the layer itself, name, it refers to the layer name and we can duplicate as many times as we want and it's always looking at the correct slider without having to go in and manually alter the expression. Now what we can do is duplicate our circle one, which should create a circle number two or named two, sorry. Let's just change the color so we can tell the difference between the two. And let's see if our slider two does anything. It does, but as you can see, it's covering up our first section. What we really want is for this section to start at the end of the first section. And we can do that using the start angle. So we can just adjust this to the end of that first section which is about there. But as you know, if you go to controls and change section one, that start angle will be different. We just need to add a small expression onto our number two. So let's open up our radial wipe again. And we're gonna add an expression to the start angle. But first, let's just on our number one, let's open up our radial wipe so we can see the transition completion and start angle because we're gonna be using both of those in our expression on number two. Back on number two, I'm going to hold Option or Alt and click the stopwatch next to the start angle. And I'm gonna start by typing T equals, and then I'm going to pick whip the transition completion on circle one in the layer below. Semicolon on the end, new line, let's go A for angle equals, and again, pick whip down to the layer below angle or the start angle. Semicolon again. Let's go enter enter so we can get a new line. Open bracket 100 minus T. And this is for the same reason as we did on the transition completion just so our percentage is going in the correct way and isn't backwards. And then we're going to times this by 3.6 which is 360 degrees divided by 100 then we need to add A, which is the start angle of the layer below. So when we duplicate this, there will be um, two start angles essentially. So we're making sure we're adding all our start angles. So whatever the angle is of the layer below, we need to add that onto our start angle on the layer we're currently looking at. So to make sure we're always looking at the layer below, again, we need to delete this one. And rather than name, we want it to look at the one below. So we go index, which is our index number here to the left, as it goes one, two, three. This is index number two. We want index number three, which is index plus one. And the same on the layer below, index plus one. So now whenever I duplicate this, it will always be looking at the index below itself. So this one, we're looking at the one below. When I duplicate, it will be looking at the one below that as well. It's just a way of doing it so we don't have to come in and change these expressions every time we duplicate. We can do it once and we can essentially duplicate as many times as we want and create a working expression. So if I click off this now, let's see if this start angle works. Let's go and change number one. Looks like it's working. I'm just gonna double check and make sure two is working as well. That goes down to zero, there you go. And that's working perfectly. So now what I can do, if I just collapse those, move this down, I can now 
select our number two and I can duplicate. I can just change the color so we can see it. Let's go back to our controls and let's see if that works now. There we go. And let's duplicate number three. Let's change that color. Back to our controls. And let's duplicate four to create our final and fifth section. And let's move that up as well to there and change that color. So there we go. What we've built is a pie chart where we can easily change the values of the sections and it automatically updates in the pie chart itself. As you will see, there will either be a gap or even an overlap potentially. And that's when these five numbers or however many sliders and sections you have, they all need to add up and equal 100, which is the total percent of the completion. So just to double check this, I like to add a text box in the top corner. Swipe total, it doesn't matter what it says, that can say anything you like, because what we're going to do is open up our controls so we can see one of the sliders. Number one, and go back to our text box, open up our source text and open up the expression on this. And let's go A equals, and then pick with our slider one, a semicolon on the end. And then I'm just going to copy all of this except the A, new line. Now I can go B, paste, C, paste, D, paste, E, paste. And that is now five sliders. So I do need to change the name of the sliders they're looking at. So one, two, three, four, and five. So what we need to do is add all of these numbers together. So on the new line, we'll just go A, plus B, plus C, plus D, plus E. And we click off. Now, here is our number. Let's just make that a lot bigger. Ooh. Just so we can see. Collapse that and collapse that. Go back to our controls, which I'll drag to the top. And now, whenever I add or take away a number from one of these sections, you will see a live update on this top left number. It's currently on 100, which is what I want. But if, for example, I did my maths wrong and I accidentally put in a number too low or incorrectly, I will see that it says 90 and I know I need to add another 10 somewhere to create that full circle. Same if it's overlapping, I can bring it back down so that number is 100. I can then also right click on this um, text layer and make sure this is a guide layer. Where's guide layer? There. And select guide layer. Now this layer, even though we can see it, you won't see it when it's rendered or if you were to bring this pie chart into a new composition, so you can move it about, you will see that number is no longer there. So I can move this around and that number is invisible, but it's just there for our reference. So now we can keyframe these sliders or do whatever we want with them really. So let's just add some quick keyframes. Oh, missed one out there, yep. Go back to the beginning, let's put them all on zero. Let's add some quick easing. Let's just see how that looks. And there we go. You'll notice that this number does have decimal places. That is something we will fix when we're looking at the numbers in the second part of this tutorial. But for now, I'll just turn that off. But for now, we are all done. So I hope that was enjoyable. Make sure you've subscribed so you can see when part two comes out. If you're watching this when it's already come out, I will share a link in the description. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.